I just got done watching a video by three pieces of human garbage. That's right, Nerdarchy. I'm talking to you. I'm talking to you, big beard guy. I'm talking to you, hat guy. I'm talking to you, little beard guy. And if one thing I can't stand in the great hobby of RPG, it's nerds with beards and glasses. And that, all right, well, never mind about that. What I'm here to tell you is you want to pretend to all those people out there in RPG YouTube fantasy land that you don't know the name. You know the name, and it's Wood, W-W-A-D. What would Ander do? And you're about to find out what Ander would do when three pieces of mealy mouth jabronis have the audacity to dismiss and decry the name of their hero, of their personal salvation and education in RPG. I know you watched every video every second over and over again with every moment of your life, and you probably have them with headphones on the back while you're making your own goddamn videos. And you want to pretend like you don't know who I am. But I'll tell you who I am. Oh my god! I'm the Ric Flair of RPGs. You see this robe? You see this robe, nerds? It costs more than all three of your houses. And you know what? I don't even care about that. That doesn't matter to me. All that matters to me is 16 pounds of RPG gold. That's right. The world champion of RPG. Each and every one of you can sit there in your beds at night and think and fantasize and pray to whatever god you worship, whether it be Cyric or Lathander, but you'll never be Ander. And that is as close as you'll ever get in the ethereal state of your dreams. Pray the Oni don't come close for your blasphemous thoughts. You want to challenge me? You want to haunt me? You want to get caught up in a war with your main man? Well, you're going to get caught up in a war. You're going to get caught up in a war and get desecrated thinking that you could preach the gospel of RPG professional wrestling to the masses of barbarians. Well, you're damn right. Even those as low as you will get a response from your main man for your blasphemous actions and antics. But you want a shot at me. You want a shot at 16! 16! Woo, my God! My God! My God! Pounds of gold! That's fine. Challenge me. Take me on in the steel cage. All right. So now that I got that out of my system, there's a video up by Nerd Arky. Uh, my good buddies over there put a video up about... Uh, in fact, here, hold on. Let me give you the exact title. Uh, titled How to Introduce Pro Wrestling to Dudgeons and Dragons D&D &D Discussions. Okay, so they put up a video about this. And uh, God love them, but let's just say there may be one RPG aficionado who knows a little bit more about professional wrestling in RPGs. Uh, no, but uh, thanks to them. They gave a nice little shout out for the channel here. And I'll definitely go check them out. Uh, they are very, uh, very D&D uh, focused. I know they have some other stuff there as well. So you might find out what you're liking. It's, it's a different channel. Like they have like three or four guys on there at a time discussing like panel style, which gives it a, a different flavor than the majority of the channels here that are, are going to focus on one guy or one, uh, uh, perhaps maybe two on, on occasions. Now, I would refer you as, uh, Someone who knows a lot about professional wrestling, particularly, you know, we're talking about 70s, 80s, 90s professional wrestling. Uh, I don't really follow it that much anymore at all. Uh, however, back when it was real, uh, your main man knew quite a, bit of, uh, quite a bit about it. And damn it, it's still real to me! The style used back then to book professional wrestling, that the exact style or psychology used then, can really help create a fantastic RPG experience, whether it's in uh, like a World of Darkness game or a modern game, or even if you're just playing professional wrestlers, whether you're playing in a fantasy game like Within the Ring of Fire. Dungeons and Dragons, I don't think, I think the various, I know I have only played 5th edition a little bit, I think the various incarnations of Dungeons and Dragons don't do professional wrestling style very well. I don't think Gary Gygax was a big wrestling fan. We can see clearly there was a large martial art movie influence in there. That's basically what the monk class is. 
and he liked that, but I like wrestling, and I don't like martial arts movies, so fuck that. Right here, you will find everything, and I mean everything you need to employ the style of professional wrestling, the advantages that will advance you into the, uh, uh, to, to, to the spectrum, if you will, into the Pontiac Silver Dome. It doesn't matter if it's closed. You understand the Boston Gardens, or even MSG itself, I uh, actually thought about putting together a professional wrestling game. I don't really think there's enough of a market for it. Professional wrestling is a couple of things. It's a match. Now, I don't think, unless you're actually using professional wrestling tactics, using those tactics, I think I messed my shirt up even more here. <laughs> um, if you're using the tactics of professional wrestling in a combat scenario, I think that can be great. I mean, why not hit a Lariot on a fucking, uh, uh, just a hobbit, just a fucking hobbit just walking around and boom, come on, Larry, the fuck out of him. <laughs> we all land over broken, and that entertained the fuck out of me. You understand what I'm saying? Because I've, I've got involved in RPG wrestling from the Forgotten Realms to Athens itself, and I assure you, those little motherfuckers will not bite you in that desert sand when you pick them up, boom, Steiner screwdriver. And the only thing he's going to bite is the dust, baby. You understand? Whether you're going uh, to Dragonlance or the Dusty Roads Inn, just below the border forest at Daggerdale. And you know there's going to be clubbering available in plenty there. What about that man Virgil? What about them boys, the nasty boys? Ted DiBiase could be a silent investor. You never know. But you'll check in Forgotten Realms Wrestling. F-R-W. 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 You checked it out with me and my good friend Kevin Cuff, comic book writer Kevin Cuff. You can pick up. His first comic book will be out very soon. Uh, Oathbound, you could go find out about that if you didn't back his Kickstarter. He did fun. He is, uh, it, it's coming very soon, which I will definitely be showing on this channel to get more of you out there by that. But you have a character, and you got to have people that get it. They get what makes professional wrestling fun. If it's someone who just hates it, they're probably not going to be able to really get with the vibe of the game. And there's all kinds of archetypes in professional wrestling that you could use to build a character. You could build a chicken shit rogue style Ric Flair. You could build an over the top berserk ultimate warrior. You could build a badass with a big painted stringy blonde hair. It's like, oh yeah, brother, what are you doing, dude? Um, you can build a narcissistic Lex Luger, an insane wild man from the hills a la Rowdy Rowdy Piper. That lay great if you understand. You can build a son of a plumber, a common man, a village hero, a man who did just a little bit better with just a little bit less. A man who does not look like, you understand, baby, the average athlete of the day. The typical player caddy, if you will. The man, uh, not, 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 the, not the style of man you necessarily going to see dropping bionic elbows on goblins. But if you're too many, you will see. A six or five on the mothership, baby. You understand? I'm talking about TBS. Saturday night. Tony Schiavone. Silver Tongue. That style... And there's so many wonderful characters. And, and in professional wrestling, a lot of the psychology, uh, when you're learning to become a professional wrestler, is look at three guys. No copy a guy. Look at three guys and take this from one and this from that and this from the other one. And it really helps you to begin to build, just by stealing from three people, beginning to build your own stuff. A unique and distinct style by not doing one guy's stuff. By doing three guys' stuff and mixing it in together. Then you start adding, creating, tweaking, seeing what you do best, and start building your own actual in-ring style, your own character style. Because after all, they're making characters. They're characters. Hulk Hogan is a character. Bruno San Martino, like it or not, was a character. Roddy Roddy Piper was a character. And these guys have theme music, just like you should use for your character. I mean, when you hear that, I am no real I mean, that shit, by the time when you hurt my friends and you hurt my... That's right! Get him, Hogan! Get that piece of trash! That's right! Take that belt off and strap a man! Strap a man! And that's a great thing. There are weapons in professional wrestling. It's wonderful to use in any kind of bar altercation, in any kind of uh, ruffian and ruffagathoms in a tavern, if you understand. that. What, what is that terrestrial man like you tell you it's going to do when you pick the bar stool up and you just crack it over his head? What about picking a man up? For a powerball, straight through the tavern table. That game has to talk about the splitters exploding, going everywhere. The beers, the grogs, the ales, the honey mead, everything. Just the, the, the goddamn 
just going everywhere. The suns, the foam, that table cracking, splitters going every direction, stabbing to the man. The blood flows, and you pick that splitter up. You grab the man by the back of the head, and and you bust him open. He bleeds buckets. Look at old, like, 80s-style professional wrestling. If you can't take that description and make on a fucking amazing, descriptive, beautiful, memorable scene in your game for combat, you can't do it. Period. It's beyond you. Talk about the gore as the crimson mask descends upon the fair, the pale features of the man, how it stays his light blood hair, a gruesome, vicious crimson. As, as he staggers around, his eyes, he's on, he's on spaghetti legs, he's, he's on Queer Street, he doesn't know what's going on anymore. Uh, and they're wild men, you know, talk about the missing link. And go Google these people, see the pictures, and go, holy fuck, these look like D&D characters. These look like guys that could slide right out or within the ring of fire. It's fucking easy to slide them right in Palladium Fantasy or Savage Worlds or any kind of fantasy game like that. Quite honestly, they fit better there than they do in our world. What about the Barbarian? What about the Warlord? Guess what classes those guys are? It's fucking pretty easy. Uh, you gotta be animated. You gotta work the mic skills. You gotta have charisma. Pro wrestlers need charisma. Sure, you might have a silent man. And another party member plays your manager. He takes that role. He's like, oh, yeah. My Undertaker. <laughs> oh, yeah. Or, you know, he might be the little scrawny, weaselly Jim Cornette. He might be the sinner, uh, the sinister, dastardly Gary Hart. No, I don't mean Jimmy Hart. But you could play Jimmy Hart, too. A loud little pipsqueak that runs his mouth. Uh, you know, uh, a horrendous businessman uh, such as Gary Hart. Um, a, a hated foreigner such as Skandar Akbar with all the customary trimmings of, of Muslim decory and... You can get involved with loud, obnoxious colors, screaming, um, and such wonderful things. Or uh, another player might play a female valet and, and use horrible... T the barbaric wrestlers are using the horrible tactics of being beaten down by the hill giant. Oh, no! Powder to the eyes! Powder to the man's goddamn eyes! Oh, the giant just, just having to sell the fuck out of it. Like, oh! Oh, and, and, and that is a wonderful thing. That's why... A lot of the reasons my games are, are better than they otherwise would have been from having watched Rush Rustic, from having seen people sell. When you, when one person sells, it shines the other person. And in games, that is so fucking absent. Watch Professional Wrestling, not because you want to watch Professional Wrestling. And don't watch it now. Go back on YouTube. Watch a match from 87. Watch a match from 82. Watch a match from, from 93 or 97. And see the selling. See the psychology. See the story being told. And that story being told in the combat is so important because so often in RPGs, all the combat is is I swing and I roll this eight sided. Oh, I don't know. I fucking missed. I swing. Oh, I hit him. Okay. Oh, I didn't confirm my crit. Oh. But what about. Ah, yeah. That's right. I bust a man in the head. He goes staggering back. Let him with a clothesline. Remember, an attack doesn't have to be one attack. You rolled a hit, did your damage. All right, you punched him. But you can do more than that. I punch a man. I and, 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 as, and he comes up. Oh, God, why not a body slam? Why not the flying knee right to the head? I'm down and I'm choking him. And then the game master comes back, and he's like, oh, yeah, yeah. And he's bringing a guy back, giving you the slanges uh, or, or selling, whatever. And you can create this tapestry, this dynamic, a role-playing opportunity inside of combat. And combat should always contain role-playing opportunities. I am so passionate about that. And if you get passionate about that, your game will become way better. And I know some of you are passionate about there. Write about that. Lead it, hit it, hit the comments. Tell us. Tell us your passions. You understand? I like to spend four minutes describing what I do in a combat. Relax. We don't got to get to the great mountain at the fucking end of the quest. Enjoy the ride. Embrace every moment to weave your tale, to describe your character, to be fucking awesome. Or to be chicken shit. To, to be falling back. To be begging off. Who don't want to do that? A Ric Flair stuff. Oh, no. 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 And then the overconfident guy. You can describe all that. The combat doesn't have to be I swing and missing. No, it's supposed to be all kinds of shit going on. You're moving. You're bobbing. You're weaving. There's a good description of AD&D 2nd Edition. When the combat was a whole fucking one round was a whole goddamn minute. And the turn was ten minutes. So... With that, they literally had an 882nd edition player's handbook with the fucking horse charging off the cover at you, which is very cool uh, cover art. I really like that cover art. A lot of great art in that book, actually. Very evocative. Now, the, bringing that in, that, you know, that sort of description, they said one of the things that really uh, captivated me from that book 
It's not just a swing and a hit or a swing and a miss. It's a whole bunch of little things going on, setting somebody up or whatever. So take that. Even if it's if it's a minute you're around, if it's six seconds, whatever it is, take that time. Try to be cognizant of the time. You don't want to do you know too much or too little, but describe you know how you're interacting, what you're doing, uh, and and that that's a perfectly viable sneak attack, right? You make all your rolls, boom, 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 roll roll everything you do before you fucking describe everything. Doing it the other way is is just incorrect. And it, it wastes time. It, it causes issues. Make your rolls. Boom, boom, boom. Okay, what are the rolls? The rolls will tell you the level of success you have. Then you put that level of success in your description, whether it's good for your character or bad for your character or whatever. Take that. Weave it in. You know, have the old classic Ric Flair spot. You know, you got the monster over here. That's got to destroy you, right? It's got the head. And, and it looks... It looks Maybe back to, you know, there's no crowd. Well, there might be a crowd, which would be even more awesome. But if there isn't, he's looked back to another monster. You know, there's a big fucking eight and a half foot tall cyclops. And he's got that one big eye, fucking crawl style. He's like, and you're like, oh, and you're begging off. And he's got your hair, and he's going to do it. And he looks at him, and you're like, and then all of a sudden he comes back. Oh, that low blow. He, he staggers back, uh, gets up here to your feet. Give him, you know, a big chop or a fucking punch to the throat or fucking kick him in his gooey, kick him in his knee, fall to the knee. And he's like, oh, oh, oh. And then when he's down, break the eyes, uh, you know, grab me the shirt, grab it, pull it over his head and hockey styles ass for a minute. Take the scene, make the scene, do it. Uh, it doesn't matter. You know, the particularly if it's like a throwaway deal, you know, uh, no game master should give a damn. You know, pick. You know, you're like, oh, oh, and the goblins are like, ma, ma, bow against you. And you go, if you're playing that big, powerful barbarian two at a time, on the goblin, maybe, maybe choke slam one goblin on top of another goblin uh, and give them what they deserve for, for their old, uh, old desecration. Look at, look at what, you know, what you have. People like Andre the Giant. That's a damn half ogre right there. Or Great Kali or Big Show. Um, what about Kurgan? Or, or even the likes of the late, great Big John Stud, who often liked to go to Orioles games in the attendance, you understand? So, bring those in, man. A big fucking cocky monster like King Kong Bundy at 444 pounds from New Jersey with the five count. Makes a wonderful character. Does, is there anyone that would ever think the one-man gang, who clearly seems to be the complete inspiration slash was ripped off for like the Lobo character of DC Comics, that's a great character. You know, you're running around with a, a one-man gang or a bruiser Brody swinging a chain. Hush! 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 It's fucking phenomenal. Uh, so you're working that and you're working your chain and you're working your followers of Tempest, your followers of Talos, your followers of, of just straight up badass uh, gods and goddesses. You work it, you know, your followers of Fatash. It doesn't matter. You know, you take them and get out there and be boisterous and be loud or sit back and just what you're going to do and throw out a verse that's evocative of something like the Bible. You can work in the religious scriptures of the world that you're, that you're in. And you just sit and look at them. And don't say much that isn't perfect, isn't perfectly performed. You know, an a la Jake the Snake Roberts. That man is a ranger. But that man was a very chaotic evil ranger of the cobra itself. And that man would have a cobra or even a python constrict your ass. He didn't give a damn. And that was right there that was etched on you know, those, those cold, steely eyes. If I could tune the voice down. And you want to also be, you know, using all sorts of different voices as best you can. You don't do impersonations or whatever. Well, it doesn't matter. Take one you do fucking horribly. No one will know you were doing that guy. You know, and that's really, really a great way to do it. Take uh, an impersonation to do it poorly. And, and you could really have something that's, that's your own. Because it doesn't sound like anything else, right? And I think that that style is far better than like a UFC style of fighting. I think is it's showy and it's it's charismatic. It's um, very interesting and a lot of it is very believable. You know, you pick somebody up and powerbomb them right through a goddamn table. I think the player can, be, can suspend disbelief for that powerbomb if they can suspend disbelief that there's a fucking minotaur in the room. I, I think they can do that. I think they can uh, they, they can work with that. They can roll with that. And, you know, it can be well badass. You know, and I've played a lot of professional wrestling style characters. And in the videos below, you can find out more about that. You know, I played, I think it was the second time I ever played 3.0. So we're talking like 2001, I want to say. 
I'm playing in this small, it was almost it was a tiny little store that was shaped weird in the mall. Uh, this is up in Northern Virginia. And you just had a lot of people there. Most of them weren't that good of role players. And the game master looked like he had kind of settled into a, just a kind of a lull with, oh, this is what I'll, I'll have to work with, so I don't need it. But when I started playing and role playing and bringing a dynamic and playing a character like which he'd never seen, that game master, I could see just the lie with the fire in his eyes from getting that energy back from me. And I'm playing a character that has um, nothing. Um, I was either a fighter or a barbarian. I can't remember which, but I, I took like, you know, all the, all the, all the wrestling feats, which sadly they're, it, it 3.5, 3.0, it's done so terribly that, that it's, it's, it's a problem. Uh, and that'd be a whole video in itself as, as to why that is an issue. When you want to wrestle, you want to leave it loose. Not, you don't want to have it tight. Tight doesn't produce a good result. It produces a fair result. Good results produce great scenes. You want to have elbow room to move off. Let me fuck these. Let me just get in here and produce for you and bring your monster back and produce on me. You know, uh, which you know allows really a, a gr some really great stuff. And I had this great scene, right? Because the characters, the other characters, knew I didn't have anything. I had no. I was a fighter or a barbarian. I had no armor. Okay, I had no weapon, and I just brawled everything. Every I would I would use whatever was around. I would I would hit things with other things. I would uh, pull up, you know, objects and hit people with those objects. Uh, I'd use the terrain around me. And I would use wrestling tactics with improved unarmed strike and what is it, improved grapple, uh, maybe improved, whatever the hell it is, you know. And I would be body slamming dudes. And I weighed 600 at 68 at three quarter pounds at six foot 11 and one half inches tall. Uh, it was very entertaining, you know. And I made the character. The character had a very high strength and a very high charisma. Because wrestlers have to have charisma. And I took the bluff skill and and uh, uh, all this stuff. And I would use these things in fascinating ways that none of these people had ever seen before. Right? So, one, one great story from there is the only thing my character had. He had clothing, a belt, some belt pouches, um, some rations, like a wine skin with wine in it, and... A bag full of nails. That's right. And one of the other characters did something in the game. Um, it's just a bad player. Did something just, just stupid. Everyone at the table was doing it. And then he, he tried to do something where, where I don't even remember exactly what happened. But we ended up in the altercation in the game, right? And of course, I'm not going to kill the guy's character. But he did get taught a lesson. Because he came at me and, and, and I grabbed a hold of him. And I think the first round, I, I just beat him up or something. And he was like kind of dazed for the next, he has an attack or whatever. He's kind of dazed. And I pull out a bag. I pull out this pouch. And I look up and the sunlight's coming down. And I slowly turn it. Because this shit was a free action, right? Because you could drop an item. But I just gave it a nice little elaborate description, of course. And, and I describe how the nails, the metallic gray fucking nails, and even pressed a rust upon them. As, as it just trickled down, catching catching the uh, the sunlight, and they hit the ground. I'd really go into the description of how they're all on the ground, and the player just completely breaks character of the game master. He doesn't have that on his character sheet, and the game master just completely stopped and looked at him because yes, in fact, he does have that on his character sheet. It's the only thing on his character sheet. Uh, and, the, and the player just looks stupefied. Then, then, of course, I hit my roll, and I just described what happened to him. <laughs> As I picked him, lifted him, elevated him in the air, brought him crashing down to the earth itself, watching the fucking nails, and I was like, oh! And, and everybody at the table is dealing with the vibe. They're fucking loving it. And, and I'm like, enough, you know, from him. And he's laying on the ground all fucking bloody from fucking nails that have desecrated his carcass. And it was fucking wonderful, you know, to, to, to play that character. There were so many. I'm not going to go into how I wrestled a giant fucking snake and defeated it in wrestling. Um, just There were just so many just great scenes I was able to do with that. And it showed these people who are like power, power gaming, main max or types. There's a whole nother way to do it. And they fucking dug it. And I think it made, because when they would like bring other characters, they would like really way up their game from the almost nothing. It was to a fucking, fucking vaulted point for their, uh, their skills at the time. Um, but I, it, 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 that, that was a, a very fun game. And, uh, of course, I am the player behind the fucking intergalactic heavyweight champion of all the universe at all times, Big Tide Humongous. 
And, and, and this uh, huge man, uh, a wrestler, it's a little module. It's a small module from uh, one of the Call of Cthulhu books. And it has like, uh, just like wrestling. I think it was in Japan. I'm not exactly sure what the module did because the, the girl that was running it, uh, her name is Kelly. She did a fucking fat, 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 phenomenal job. It was it was just her, her boyfriend Wayne and and, and me. We were the we, she had two players and her. And this is a real life game, a real person. I guess they're all real life games, but this one was in person, face to face. And we played together for a while, and, and they, they they knew I dug that kind of thing. And uh, they were moving, and, and Kelly says, "I want to run this, this special game for you." And she knew how I was wrestling stuff. So she says, "Look, uh, can you bring me over a whole bunch of like Japanese wrestling tapes? I want to see a bunch of them." And I said, well, yes, <laughs> obviously, that's the answer. So I bring her some Japanese wrestling tapes, you know, like FMW stuff, New Japan stuff, um, All Japan, probably maybe some Wing or Mishinoku Pro. I'm not even sure what, what else I even brought her, Noah, or yeah, a bunch of stuff. I was like, here you go. She's like, okay. And she sat down and watched a ton of it to, 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 to get it so she could really do it as a game master. And... Um, when I came back, she's like, okay, look, why don't you make this kind of character? And so basically, I was the professional wrestler, and Wayne was playing my, uh, he was my manager. And it was fucking wonderful. A lot of big tidy humongous, and I had, like, the paint up on, like, one part of my, like, a big fucking wave. And uh, the fucking mohawk, I'm fucking, it's fucking great. And he he was, because I used to call him LL the Inquisitor, so he made his character LL the Inquisitor. And he was, like, it looked like, like he was, like, a Roman Catholic priest from, like, you know, a fucking thousand years ago. Uh, and he would come in. His character was a little Paul Bearer-ish. It was fuck. It was wonderful because we would cut promos. And this is the thing: if you want to play a pro wrestler in a game, you have to be able to cut those promos. You know, you can do them. You've just defeated a monster. You're on top of him. You cut the promos. You are an action hero. You got to be of one liners. You got to have a, you know quick thought and and really put that charisma over. And it's fucking great. You can watch the Forgotten Realms wrestling videos, the first two, and you can uh, uh, send send messages to Kevin Cuff. Fucking send him friend requests on Facebook. Fuck with him. Um, he deserves it. We were supposed to get another uh, session three in uh, to, 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 to see what happens. And I would advise you to watch those two. Even if you don't like live plays, um, there's an incredible amount of humor in it. All, all very much in character. There's some tongue-in-cheek stuff. That's the style I wanted to run for that deal. Uh, a little campy in a very good way. And... I think you're going to be thoroughly entertained. You're going to laugh your asses off. Check them out on my channel, Forgotten Realms Wrestling, episode one and episode two. Uh, they are not, they're not huge. I think they're both around three hours long. So, you know, you can get in there and access it. And uh, I think you really enjoy his character, Valorian, who is, um, who is, who is very, uh, very, very uh, entertaining. Kind of Ultimate Warrior meets um, Cole the Conqueror meets uh, Arnold Schwarzenegger as Conan. Um, and and just 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 awesome. The character of his is just awesome. It's my favorite character I've ever seen anyone anyone play in a game I was in or in a game that I've run or or whatever. It's a fucking phenomenal character. I love I love 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 his character. And that's what you want to bring across. You know, you're you're walking tall. You're an action star. You know, or you're like a sniveling kind of. I mean, you could be like some filthy little goblinoid and be like. You know, we're flaring it up. Or, you know, you could be that Playboy style, you know, where you're the rich guy. You, you're putting everything over. You know, I'm the fucking man. Um, you can be, you know, this weird oddity uh, that doesn't belong in this world at all. Uh, oh, anyway, well, I'll get back to that. I know I'm rambling all over the place, but I'm excited. I love this kind of stuff. And I uh, see if somebody put up a video like that and mentioned me. I was going to have, I was going to have my comeback if you get that. So, I know my man Wendell is out there, baby. Wendell Sotomayor, if you will. Uh, uh, and I, good, good. Nice to see you. So, it's in, in, in this game, right? The aliens, the Call of Cthulhu game. Aliens come down to Earth, uh, kind of covered up in Japan. And this is a real module, so you can get this and run it for your players. They have like a picture of like Tiger Mask on there, but I don't know if they use the name. Like a, like a drawing, and like some other guy I can't remember. And they think then we get in the feeds from our planet, right? And they think professional wrestling is real. They think it's a, it's a shoot, right? And in the, in the game, like we're we're working like to build up. We're like working some matches and stuff. And I'm this big guy. I'm a white guy. So I'm a gaijin wrestler, and like you know we're it's like me and my opponent in the back. Like we're talking over the match. We go out there. We have the match, and he's on the back. Oh, thank you, thank you. And and it's it's like that. And I think. 
if you're doing it in a modern world, trying to present professional wrestling as real, you've missed the boat on the the, the, the possibility. If you're in a D&D style game and you're combating things, it's a wonderful, crazy style of combat that is just so loose, so fun, so easy. Uh, games that are rules light. If you want a system, find anything that's rules light. Uh, I would suggest this one because that'd be all that's just already there for you. But anything that's rules light, you certainly don't want to do it with like champions. And I, I think even D&D is way too rules heavy. Uh, Pathfinder uh, changed the rules, in my opinion, made them made them worse. Um, both is someone who, who, who loves and trains a pro wrestler and someone who did combat sports for years. Uh, particularly uh, freestyle, folk style wrestling, um, you know, free free rolling, uh, grappling. I I think the best way to do it is loose, because then th th there's small things that completely destroy the uh, realism, the truth behind what you're doing when 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 the rules are tight. Because I, I don't think they were written by people who who have an enormous amount of combat experience. They feel false and, and faulty to me in that regard. So, I, I think you want to be loose. You want to rely on the narrative, on the description, on the back and forth. And you can certainly have rules to do that. You, you roll your dice. Did I win? Did I lose? Okay, I won. Okay, let's describe that portion, that round. Oh, you won. Okay, let's work it that way. Sell. You have the game master or the other character. Sell for you. You sell for them. It works great. Okay. But anyway, so these aliens land, and they know I was the champion of Japan. You understand what I'm saying? I was their champion. Uh, we were using a real federation. I don't remember which one though. Uh, and they came, so I had like we had a shoot match, and my 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 managers out there, and it's a whole crowd full of these aliens. There's actually a picture there for the aliens. They got like three legs, and like I I think they like three eye stalks, and these weird looking arms. And their champion comes out. He's got the belt, the fucking intergalactic title or, or whatever it was called. It was made of some unearthly metal. It's fucking awesome is what it was. And he comes out and they're all cheering. When I, when I came, I think I came up first. They're, they're all booing me and my managers are there yelling at him. And, and of course, I had to I had to work heel. So my time manager, we had to work heel because my character's a baby face. You understand? They loved him in Japan. He was big in Japan. The big man that was big in Japan. And they come in and we, we have this fucking phenomenal, phenomenal deal because... The, the fans, they don't riot, right? Because of the filthy earthing, of course I'm going to cheat. They've seen nothing but this pro wrestling. They know all kinds of evil tactics going on. So I got my manager up there distracting it. It was an alien referee in the ring, right? Fucking phenomenal, isn't it? And my manager's distracting him. And when the, then the alien was beating me down for a long time, it really fucked me up. And 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 um, I'm like, uh, with my manager, right? My manager's joy. She's like throwing, he's distracting the ref. I'm getting the low blows in, you know, or whatever I was. Oh, no, no, no. I didn't get the low blow. Um, Cause I didn't, I was thinking that I didn't know where his fucking genitals were because the way it was described in the picture I saw of it, but it did have them eye stocks. So, so I took the eyes and raked them and took them a lot like you do like the old Samoan spot where you'd slam the two Samoan heads together. But of course they would just turn and look at you. But if they've done that, you knew you get what spot I'm talking about. I took his eyes and slammed the eyes together. And it's like, oh, after I raked them, <laughs> that shit was phenomenal. And uh, it got fucking blinded in the eyes with baby powder or salt or whatever my manager had, like at a different point. This is like making a comeback. And uh, I'm, I'm like down, distracting them, distracting the ref, like pulling them over, like there's something wrong with my boot or something. And, and, and the beast is like looking at the people, like, and it, right to the eyes, like, oh. So I get up immediately, like hit the Larry Oots on it or something. It was a fucking phenomenal game, but it was huge and heavy. My hair was real strong. So uh, at the end, I picked it up. Like my hair had like old school style wrestling tactics, like maybe I'm Abdul, the butcher of the industry, if you will, and without hepatitis C. And I picked him up and just hit the big scoop slam and do the big Hulk Hogan real backs, hitting the ropes, selling the back, and, ah, ah, and a beast is like, oh, it's like fucking flailing. I get in the corner and I look around and the fans are booing the shit out of me and the fucking bright lights are coming down. I charge on the corner, the tie is in, dropping the huge elbow, hooking the leg. The referee don't want to do it, but one, two, and three. New intergalactic champion of the of fucking all space and time, big time humongous. So you gotta get excited, excited, get the excitement, sell, sell the excitement, get it over. When you do that for any type of combat, fucking aces. And when when you're physical, there's so many things you can do, you know, and that makes it that makes it, it it doesn't get stale, you know, it's just over and over. And you can build finishing moves for your character. And that fucking awesome for your barbarian instead of hitting somebody with an axe for 10 damage. Just fucking charge across and put a big boot to a man's head. I mean, 
goes back, the eyes roll the head. You fucking look around, drop the big knee right on his fucking mouth. Talk about the chitlins going everywhere, the blood flushing out, the fucking coppery taste to the mouth, the desecration and devastation done by you. Uh, and you can run it by yourself, or you can run tag team. You, know, you can run a Gemini-style tag team, like a Demolition, two big guys. Or you can run, you know, the, the, the high acrobatic Lucha Libre style, Japanese style. Um, you can run the, the fucking type of baby face, like a Ricky Morton, that's just big and big, and, and he's bleeding buckets, and he's, he's trying to get help, but he's pulling back, and he's got so much heart. He's so plucky that, you know, people are getting with it. And uh, just look at them. There's just... A, Abundant character concepts for a fantasy role-playing game. And many of them can very easily be applied to non-humans because the, the individuals there are that are there look like non-humans. So it's a natural fucking fit. It's great for you. It's um it, it really can create some energy, you know. And you can cut those promos, those one-liners like an action star. You can uh, really get into selling. You could use professional wrestling style weapons like the golden spike of Kevin Sullivan. You can um Having a weird little professional wrestling type quest, which you will see. Oh, I forgot when I was wrestling. You really learn everything you need to learn about professional wrestling in an RPG environment. That will certainly do it for you. Uh, those those two volumes, and hopefully we'll have oh, hopefully we'll have another volume here soon. Um, you know, in that basically you see a lot of your a lot of your favorite uh, Forgotten Realms NPCs uh, do appear. We have on uh, basically. Basically, like the gods are kind of watching and manipulating, right? But they're basically the announcing team. You know, we have Helm and Talos as the announcing team. And Talos, of course, you know, he's supposed to be a bad guy. Helm's supposed to be a good guy. But Talos is chaotic, right? And, and Helm is all fucking Mr. Lawful. And we start off every episode right deep in character. Right? Boom. And there's like the fucking scrying portal with the mist coming up. And there's like other gods in the background. But they're like well into the background where they kind of look like a wrestling audience. But with the house light dimmed. And, and Helm and Talos step up, and they're, they're talking to each other about this action. And slowly, because Vlorian's like chaotic good, but chaotic as fuck. And, and Helm, like, starts slowly hating him, just hating him, like, more and more and more. And Talos just starts getting with his action more and more. So it's eventually, you know, we're, you know we're, we're, we got great fucking things at, at play. Um, you can watch that man, Elleminster, is there as the Boogie Woogie Man, Jimmy Valiant. We call him Boogie Woogie Elleminster. Uh, you can watch Fazal Chambrol as Ric Flair. And uh, we've seen the entire horsemen. The horsemen have been there. Uh, we did see uh, a betrayal on Valorian. And then Valorian has, we, we've, we've seen, we've seen many wrestlers. You can bring them in, you can make them, those famous people, or just add them. Um, to having basically a what if professional wrestling uh, had be somehow integrated in some alternate universe. And they were all there, kind of the same character, they were kind of the same gimmick. And, um, you know, it is very, very interesting. And, of course, you have a great prop in D&D. One thing D&D is great for for professional wrestling is, of course, the greatest magic item of all time. The one magic item I bow down to uh, for Gary Gygax and, and whoever created it, if not him, I don't know. But it's fucking wonderful. We're talking about the... We're talking about 16 pounds. Woo, my God, of gold. And I actually have the uh, I actually have the Ric Flair. Well, I don't have it. My kid has it. I had to go dig through his room to find. Uh, this is all I can find. Uh, the UFC belt, but he gets the point of it, baby. That girdle of giant strength. You and, and you can build them up right because they, they they have lesser ones. Like oh, it's like the plus two strength, you know. So it's like all fucking copper and looks like some indie league wrestling title. And then you get all the way up to like Storm Giant or Titan or whatever you want to do. Maybe Titan Towers if you understand. And you got this huge fucking sixteen pounds of gold around your waist. And I mean, I'm gonna allow a man to use tactics with that. I let a man. Oh, I did a video on it. If you go to my wrestling uh, girdle of giant strength, or just the fucking championship belt, you know what I'm saying? It's called girdle of giant strength. Uh, type wood WWE AD WWAD uh, in, and you can uh, you can get right to that video. Uh, take it. Just waffle a man with a belt right in the head, or, or just rip it off, throw it to the ground, and pile drive a man. I'll give you a bonus. I don't give a damn. Uh, uh, hit a man, whip a man with a belt, Hulk Hogan style, run it into someone's face. You know, do, do do whatever you need. You put it over your shoulder. You know, you'll see wrestlers coming out with that. So I think it really it can really make uh, uh, just just fantastic shit because you're wearing it around all the time, right? Like people in the village, are, oh, oh no, it's it's the champion. You could set that scene right in an arena. Uh, you know, claim belts, have fucking have the have the the, the girls on the line, if you will. Just fuck, it's a phenomenal, phenomenal stuff. 
you can have like the two enemies and you can build this shit up. You know, you don't just, that's right. It's built up and then you fight, right? And then, you know, at the end it could be like, like they're going to go again. After the match, and has a handshake, and then that man can be added to the party, or you know, can become a, a companion or ally for future adventures. Just, just wonderful thing because wrestling has enormous numbers of plot lines that if your friends don't watch wrestling, they won't know you stole them, which makes for it, it would give you near endless adventures, right? Uh, with that style, and you can tone it down. You know, you can use swords and axes and all this stuff toned down with that same wrestling angle, with that same presentation, with that same action hero uh, style. And your friends don't even know they're playing professional wrestling, uh, which in itself can be fantastic. Um, you want to do a, a realistic professional wrestling game, make them how professional wrestling is. They are not really fighting each other. Talk about the travels down the road. I, I personally would set it like in the in the in the sixties and the fifties and the in the seventies, uh, eighties, nineties when people are still traveling, when they're going by car, when they're when they're talking in there. And you could easily have you know a pro wrestling game. You know, it should be a little campy, but Take a World of Darkness type setting. Take uh, a modern day uh, uh, style, you know, or, or like 70s style, right? And the professional wrestlers see some weird shit, you know. And you got professional wrestlers versus werewolves versus vampires. Um, you might be a made to control reality, baby. But what about Scott Steiner? That man controls reality with the largest arms in the world. And what's, what, what's magic going to do when you get put in the goddamn Steiner recliner? You can't be casting those spells while your back itself breaks into a billion pieces and you scream, yes, you are the big bad booty daddy. Uh, Scott Steiner himself a fantastic, fantastic fucking character. An insane fucking raging ogre. Uh, and screaming and hollering and hitting moves with athleticism. Besides that, with great grappling skill, with fucking sheer random madness on the microphone. Watch his, uh, watch his uh, promo, promo, uh, and just, just a fucking amazing character you can inject into something as a, as a, as a good guy or as a bad guy, a protagonist, an antagonist, whatever you want to call. Um, so I think professional wrestling works great. I think you can do it just as the matches kind of start off like, why I recommend doing it like seventies or eighties used to be all these territories all over the country and some of them were dusty and crusty and old and just, ugh. With low payoffs and they were shitty, so that's where a lot of people went to start. And you could go into like these territories in Alabama, um, Puerto Rico, places like that, and you're learning, you're new, and you can start off there with a first level character, right? He's honing his skills, you know. Give him uh, again. I wrote, actually wrote up a bunch of stuff for this, you know. Give him mic skills, give him charisma, uh, give him um, in ring working ability. Uh, Whatever and stats for like how over they are, you know, four stats like that are great. You know, it doesn't make any difference how strong your character is, how whatever. You know, those are just cosmetics. That's just working a different style. You know, it doesn't matter. Hulk Hogan uh, was over because he was fucking impressive. You know, he had that charisma. That's what got him over. Um, so that's just all all part and parcel. But you know, you can see a, a lot of other guys, a lot of guys have gotten over in the industry. Um, so you don't want to look at it if you want to do it realistically with 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 it sort of a D and D style uh, to modern day. I think like what is a D twenty bar? I think that'd be a terrible game to use. Just something you know, maybe more like a World of Darkness or something like that, or 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 with the within the real fire uh, would probably get you there pretty well. And in a game, then when you want to take it, flip it, and use the moves real, you know, I mean that's I know I would tune in. I would tune in for Kurt Angle versus Zombies. I'd tune in every fucking week for that shit. That shit would be phenomenal. Uh, or, 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 or fucking what about Hulk Hogan versus Vampires? Like you do, do imagine something like um, I Am Legend, right? And there's fucking vampires everywhere and they're fucking trying to fuck around. But the last man on earth is my uh, 24 inch pythons, dude. And the vampires are like coming at him. Oh no, it's a big boot. Another vampire. Oh, axe bomber clothesline. Another vampire with the atomic drop, the vertical suplex. And that first one's trying to get up. Oh no. A big leg gets dropped on it, and the head itself is destroyed. Hulk Hogan is wrestling fucking cities full of vampires. That shit, well, Camby would be funny as fuck. And if you describe it in a way that, that you maintain seriousness, you're not out of character bullshitting around. You're maintaining that seriousness. And Hulk Hogan dropping a leg. Good enough. Watch right, brother. And the other vampires. Well, Oh, I'm fucking intimidated by Hogan, by Hogan's tactics, and then what for my? Oh no, it's the Undertaker! Why the hell not? As a giant fucking vampire, fucking uh, 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 individual antics, or perhaps Gangrel, 
Uh, uh, David Heath is there, though, hitting a paler DDT on Hulk Hogan. Hogan. Down, selling it, trying to drink the blood. Oh, no. Oh, no. Hogan's coming back, brother. <laughs> you know, uh, to me, uh, uh, that kind of shit is fucking awesome. It's funny. Um, you know, you can you can just do so much. So, so very, 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 very much uh, in that area. Hopefully, this, this video is helpful for anyone who wants to interject professional wrestling style into their game. Um, and I think I've given you, you several ideas. I could sit here for fucking three more hours, but I see I'm over 45 minutes. Just for the excitement. Uh, thanks again to Nerdarchy for uh, uh, making a mention of Forgotten Realms Wrestling in the video. And um, thank you guys for watching. Your main man appreciates it. Share if you've used fresh wrestling in your games before. Right down below. Uh, you know, get involved with it. Get to Within the Ring of Fire. Great stuff in here to actually give you advantages and a style to build professional wrestling style characters. Because, like I said, Gary guys like fucking action movies, but I like professional wrestling.